So we're into September. We've got a couple weeks left of uh, the ice melt before we reach the Arctic sea ice minimum. Um, I hope you're doing well out there. And, uh, you know, I hope uh, we can keep the virus at bay by wearing masks inside, you know, as the kids uh, head back to school in uh, many places around the, the world. So I'm just going to continue on my discussion of how ocean heat underneath the Arctic sea ice is coming up closer and closer to the ice and will cause regions of the Arctic to remain ice free all winter. And they're a big factor in the overall demise of the Arctic sea ice. So I'm going to talk about the, I started talking about this paper, this article rather, um, um, this journal article, you know, not journal, this uh, news article in, you know, science. Growing underwater heat blob speeds the demise of the Arctic sea ice. So, strengthening currents and waves are pulverizing the ice. It's not just the warming atmosphere that's speeding up the ice loss. Okay, so a new study just published suggests that deep heat in the Arctic Ocean has risen and is now melting the ice from below. Okay, so in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, there, as you go deeper in the water, the water gets colder and there's a thermocline where the temperature drops quickly, you know, whether it be like a hundred or a couple hundred meters down. But in the Arctic, it's got an unusual temperature inversion. Okay, bitter winters and chilly, buoyant, fresh water from Eurasian rivers and also melt water from the ice, it cools the surface layers and that helps preserve the underside of the ice. But just below that, a couple hundred meters down at greater depths, there's a warm blob of salty Atlantic water. Because it's salty, it's heavier. So the warmer, you know, warm, normally warm, warm water is lighter, than, obviously, than cold water, you know, for the same salinity or for fresh water. But as you add salt, that makes the water heavier. So you can have very salty and warmer water. And that's what's going on in the Arctic. We've got this salty Atlantic water. And it's thought to be safely separated from the sea ice. But as the ice on the surface is melting, it's replaced by darker water, which absorbs more of the sun's energy and warms. So these warmer surface waters migrate downward into this warm blob, whereas the warm blob starts moving upward, shoaling, and they connect. And then basically heat from the Atlantic water down below can start melting the sea ice. Now there's enough heat down below in the Atlantic water to melt the Arctic's ice three to four times over. So this blob could devour the ice from below if the barrier of the cold surface layers ever dissipates. And it, this is actually happening along the edges of the ice, mostly in the Barents Sea. So this paper, you know, in the Journal of Climate, it shows that this warm blob, the Atlantic water, it's usually found 150 meters be below or deeper it's recently moved to within 80 meters of the surface. Increased turbulence means that some of that heat is now melting the ice because it's mixing with the colder, fresher water near the surface. And it's therefore taking out the underside of the ice. It's making, so this heat has become regionally the key forcing for sea ice decay. So this is in the Barent Sea, and those areas are becoming ice free year round. This process is called Atlantification. It's already well underway in the Brent Sea, north of Norway, where fingers of warm Atlantic water have spread north and risen, melting sea ice even in winter months. The invasion shows no signs of stopping. It's moving further and further into the Arctic Ocean, ultimately extending into the Arctic more and therefore having more open areas of, of uh, water. So this is... Uh, so they're measuring this with the mosaic. There's uh, so the mosaic uh, multidisciplinary. It stands for multidisciplinary drifting observatory for the study of Arctic climate. It's it's on the polar stern, the icebreaker that I showed you. So the ship froze in a flow in October 2019, and they were going to be locked in there for a full year, exchanging crew. Okay, but they. There was a pandemic, so it made personnel rotations difficult, and the ice drifted too far out the Fram Strait, and the flows broke up. So they had to motor back up in late July, pull up all their instruments, and the flow melted. And then they went up to the North Pole, where they're do, re, doing a, a, a repeat. 
Okay, so um, now the currents are increasing in the Arctic Ocean as we lose more and more ice. Okay, the fetch is longer, the, the, the winds are blowing, the ice, you know, can, 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 can um, make it diverge or converge depending on the direction of the winds, etc. As the ice melt exposes more water to the push of the wind, uh, the currents are increasing. The, things are mobile, they're moving more. But another thing is the roughness of the sea ice, okay? If the ice is very, very thin, it can bridge up and then the wind can catch it and propel it. Okay, so the, the, the first year ice is flatter, right? Thicker, multi-year ice, which there's very little of. It's, uh, you know, it's deformed and it's rougher. So it becomes, as the ice gets thinner and weaker, it's more prone to the crunch and crumble that builds up wind catching ridges and then it moves faster. Okay, and this is also a problem. And there's also ICESAT-2, which is a laser altimeter on a satellite launched in 2018. And it distinguishes, can distinguish, it's high resolution. It can distinguish between ice flow cracks and melt ponds on top. It measures the thickness of the ice. And it also sees a huge difference between any, the minimal multi-year ice left and the first year ice. So the multi-year ice is basically twice as rough as first year ice. It's like an aging skin, it gets wrinkly over time. And this satellite can also measure, uh, capture wave motion in the ice. So you get waves from storms and they propagate under the ice and the ISAT 2 laser altimeter can measure these. And as these, these waves contribute to breaking the ice apart, so it gets more exposed to heat and it melts further. And there's something called the Synoptic Arctic Survey, which has been set up to, to survey all, all of these things. Okay, so let's look at the key paper here that was just published. Um, published even, you know, I didn't think it was 15th of September. It's only the 3rd. I guess that's the official day. Anyway, it's called Weakening of Cold Halocline Layer. So the halocline is the layer you know, uh, fresher water at the surface and saltier water below. So halo is salt. So it's like a, a sharp transition from fresh to salty. As we go down, right, we get the Atlantic water and the weakening of this layer, the weak, so the halo cline kind of reduces and separates the mixing. It reduces vertical motion between the two regimes. But as it's weakening, that means there's mixing between the colder, the warmer Atlantic water down below and the uh, layer of uh, colder water next to the sea ice. So this exposes the sea ice to oceanic heat in the Eastern Arctic Ocean it's talking about. And again, there's enough heat down below to take out all of the ice in the Arctic Ocean four, three or four times over. Okay, so I'll talk about this paper. So they took a 15 duration record of moored observations. They have drifting buoys, they had moored observations in the Eurasian basin. And they looked at the heat flux from intermediate depth. So 150 to 900 meters down warm Atlantic water to the surface mixed layer and sea ice. The upward, so heat moved from the Atlantic water layer uh, it's normally, it normally doesn't move. It's normally separated by the stability of the halocline, but the halocline is weakening. So we're getting shoaling of the Atlantic water. It's moving closer to the surface. Um, in winter 2017 to 2018, the Atlantic water was only 80 meters down in, in, instead of the, the normal 150 to 200 meters. Okay, this is the shallowest in the records. Um, the weakening of the halo cline for several months implies that Atlantic water heat was linked to winter convection associated with brine rejection. So when sea ice forms, the brine is rejected. The brine is uh, very, very salty water, so it's heavier, so it sinks down. But now, um, because of the upward uh, heat flux, um, we're not getting that sinking as much. So the upward oceanic heat flux during the winter um, was an average of three to four watts per square meter in 2007 to 2008, and it's over 10 watts per square meter in 2016 to 18. So there's a lot more heat coming out of the ocean to melt the, the sea ice on top. And this seasonal uh, Atlantic water heat loss in the Eastern European basin is equivalent to a more than twofold reduction 
in winter ice growth, okay? So the winter ice is not forming in these regions because the ocean, warm ocean water below is preventing that from, from happening. So this is a very, this is an excellent paper and they talk about a lot of different things, but I'll just show the, uh, some of the, the data. So 2013 is dark blue, light blue 2015, red is 2018. Okay, this is the temperature as a function of depth. So 50, 100, 150, 200 meters. And what you can see is that, uh, you know, as we, from 2013 to 2018, there's been a huge shift in the heat. It's the, the heat is going deep down below. And uh, this, is, this is the cold halocline layer here. And you can see the heat at the surface. So 2013, you know, it's right here still very cold at the surface near the freezing point of the of the ocean water but now it's much much warmer okay it's going much much warmer um, in the last few years this is the salinity as a function of the depth and what we're seeing is okay so the salinity from low to high okay so what we're seeing is the, the water near the surface you know in the first 50 meters or so is becoming more and more salty okay so there's still lots of melt there's still input from the freshwater rivers and uh, melting of the first year ice making it fresh but the the saltier water down below as it's moving upwards and shoaling it's bringing a higher and higher salinity closer to the surface and that's exactly what we're seeing um, this is the this is a measure of the water column stability um, and uh, you know, basically, um, without going into too many details, it's showing that the water column is becoming less and less stable. The halocline is breaking down, so the Atlantic water can move up closer and closer to the surface. And this is the nutrients, uh, you know, so there's not a, a huge uh, lot of change in this. And this is the direction of the current. So we've got the Barents Sea here. The, the Eastern Siberian Sea, we've got the uh, Canada Basin and the Chukchi Sea, okay? And what you can see is the red is the, this is circulation of the intermediate Atlantic water is the red arrow. So this is the water uh, down below, okay? This is the warm, Atlant warm, salty Atlantic water down below. So it's coming up here through the Brent Sea coming right up here through the Fram Strait and it's going right into the Arctic Ocean. Some of it circles back this way, some of it circles back this way, some of it circles back this way. So the heat of the, Atl the Atlantic water, remember this is the water that's normally 150, 200 meters below the surface water and it's normally separated. The heat is normally kept away from the Arctic sea ice. But what we're seeing is it's shoaling over in these regions and that's moving into the Arctic. So as it continues to move into the Arctic, then we have our mechanism for completely eliminating the sea ice and keeping it ice free um, throughout the winter months as well. If, you know, if it completely mixes with all of the water in the Arctic Ocean Basin, then we won't get any ice forming even in the winter. But we'll have first the Blue Ocean event and then the duration of it will extend, and this is a mechanism, I think, clearly that will, will lead to complete demise of the Arctic sea ice. Although they don't state that in this paper, but I think that's the case that's going to be happening. So if we look at some more figures, this is the, uh, something called the, the Gackle Ridge, GR. It divides the Nansen Basin. Um, from the Amundsen Basin, and in the Nansen Basin is where we're getting this shoaling, and uh, you know the ice isn't forming here in the winters anymore. To any, to any mostly, you know, in this region, and that will propagate over into this region next. They've got all these moored um, sites here for collecting data, and let's have so th this is information on all these moored sites, and let's look at some more figures here. So. This is uh, the this is the uh, current ocean current speed. Um, so this is annual and summer. So the ocean currents are increasing. This is measured at these different mooring sites that I showed you. This is the 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 buoyancy frequency decreasing here. 
Um, this is to do with the stability of the water, Richardson number, to do with turbulence and so on. I'll continue in another video. Thank you for listening.